Good morning everyone, it's a good day today. Uh, what I'm doing here is kind of a little update video-ish. Now you guys have probably already seen the airsoft videos that I've put up. Now I said I'd be doing some other things on the channel in the description, so now I can finally get started. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to go through a rundown. I just bought my drift car. So we're going to go throughout these you know, months and stuff, we're going to go through when I go to track days, um, you know, so you can see all that stuff. And also upgrading the car, you know, when I do work on it, show you guys how to do some of the things. I'll also post links on like where I got them. So let me actually show you the car because most driven people's cars are always 240S axis. So there's always abundance of videos and knowledge out there for those. Now what I have is an RX-7, which is completely, you know, it's got a different type of engine now. I do see there are quite a few forms out there that are dedicated for those cars, but I don't see too many like how-to videos and stuff. So that's the other purpose I'd like to do of getting it ready. So let's actually show you the car. Boom, and there is, there she is. As we'll go through it. So this is a 1986 RX-7 GXL. Now, it's not in the best shape as you can see. It's got a little you know the paint's chipping but it looks like it was repainted the same color which is that's actually not too bad a little rust around here where that can just be sanded out I mean it's a bit scuffed but I mean it's not too bad eventually we'll be getting rid of these putting the uh, 89 to 91 RX-7 the circle lights on I'll do like tutorial on how to do all that um, it's still got the stock exhaust, so we'll actually go through doing an exhaust system. It's a bit chipped and everything, but not too bad. I mean, you've got a, like here, around here. Got a couple dings like this, but nothing too major. It's still pretty much just stock, as you can see, but not bad for what I got. It, the, what's been done to it already is the tranny's been rebuilt and it has a new drive line, which is was more important to me. It actually only doesn't have that many miles on it, which is really nice for a RX-7 with those rotary engines. And the sunroof actually does still work. It doesn't go all the way back. There's sand jammed into it, but it goes up and down, which I'm going to get that all cleaned out. Oh yeah, and that passenger door here doesn't open from the outside which is quite hilarious but yeah what we'll be doing is uh I'll be doing videos on getting this ready and stuff that you know to get it ready for drifting so let's take a look at the interior you've got your kind of maroon reddish interior now this is where what it needs a lot of work with too as you can see the this is broken here and that the window does work but the passenger side is controlling the drivers. It is a bit, you know, chipped up. The seat's not in too bad shape. The passenger seat, as you can see, is pretty decent shape. Um, the center console's pretty much gone. I don't even think this is for the car. I think it's for a different one. All this stuff was like security button, mirrors, and like for the sports suspension, which that's all out. So you can see it's our three best friends. So let's hop inside actually. Now, I really do like the dashboard here. We've got the big tachometer, our miles per hour. See, we've only got about 111,000 miles on it, which is actually pretty good. This actually has less mileage than my other car that I have, which is much newer, which is an 07. Got our oil pressure, temperature, voltage, and fuel. Now, our aircon system, this is kind of, it kind of works. The com air compressor doesn't have a belt on it, so that's, I don't care any about that. We, you know, GPS, but all of the idiot lights. I was actually surprised that it actually still came with the original owner's manual, which is quite fantastic, but, you know, as you can see, the dashboard's all cracked. Not super bad. I mean, these are not in bad shape. I, that's 
pretty much gone. I've got another one of those. Again, same deal. So this seat's in a better condition. Now, as you can see back here, this is a kind of nice bonus that it came with. Is it came with a pretty good sound system. Uh, the two twelves. It does have speakers all the way around, but the, the, those kickers pretty much just overwhelm anything. And I love these. Being able to just put my stuff inside of these, and I, I find that to be really awesome. And this is the old radio, which this will get pulled out and a new one pulled in because it's so basic and it doesn't all it lets me do is treble and bass that's the only things i can do with it but not too bad but let's take a look underneath the hood so you can see the interior does need some work which i'll be going through how to do interior stuff but this is i need two hands for this main part here so we've got you know the guy put it aftermarket he put a Tenzo on it but we're eventually gonna get rid of this and actually put a different one on I'm gonna be putting the stock air box on for a little bit just because I don't have an air pump as you can see it would go right here and it connects down all the way down into here now right now this car isn't passing emissions so I'm gonna be putting an air pump back on and normally it'll connect to right here no well, it fills the air box and connect to the air box and there'd be a little plug or a nipple that you would plug in a silicone hose to that would go down into the air pump but that's not there but you know we got our all of our stuff in here uh, what what's gonna be kind of done in here is we'll I'll go through videos on how to take this off so we can so you can get to the injectors which is here here and then two of them are down in there to get them serviced um, we'll go through I'm gonna I'm pretty sure I have a vacuum leak so we're I'm gonna be replacing all of these vacuum hoses well the majority of the vacuum hoses and that will, you know, we'll go. I'll go through a video on that. Eventually, we'll get rid of this stock radiator. We'll put a nice aftermarket one on. I'll go through those. Um, I need to do these radiator hoses because that's ballooning and that's not good. The belts are okay for now, but they will be need to be replaced. Um, spark plugs are just right down there. And our oil filter right here, which I really love that they're they're up high. There, it's it's really nice. So another thing that will be happening, because this is going to be a drift car, is we're going to get a baffled oil pan. Now I did find one for an actually really good price, so I'll be going through that video. Um, the next video will probably see pop up is I'm getting a, a Magnaflow cat because this one is still a stock one, and from what the previous owner said is it's pretty much all gutted so we're going to be going through that but you know be going through some interior engine stuff um also how to adjust some things like here you've got your tps sensor which i need to readjust this because it's idling just a little high and i'll show you guys how to go through that as well let's start her up so you guys can hear what she sounds like Now, I think rotaries are some of the coolest sounding cars. They are a little different, but they are quite awesome. And I don't need that to turn on right now. But as you can see, the, it doesn't red line until 7, which is awesome. Now, a lot of newer cars yeah, still have red lines going from about 6.5 onward, but you usually never push them unless they're nicer sporty sportier cars but this you know I can take it up to seven pretty much every time I drive it but let's get it started all 
idles pretty decent. Now it's it's warmed up and everything. Normally with these cars, what you'll see is they'll they'll jump up to. Mine likes to jump up to about 1,500, sometimes close to 2,000 RPM, and it'll stay about there till it warms up. Now I know I have a vacuum leak because I adjusted my TPS sensor, and when it's still warming up, it'll still kind of jump up and down a bit. But these hoses are again, it's uh, 86, so these are really really old hoses that I don't know if they've ever been replaced so you know better safe than sorry we've got good oil pressure this voltmeter sometimes works sometimes doesn't but I've gone for a couple days with it saying zero playing my speakers and the car hasn't died so I'm assuming it's just that I may get behind it and look at it but idiot lights are working let's see what it sounds like So, it is it is a pretty simplistic engine, it, when you really look at it, because the injection system, you know, the air, top manifold or whatever, and then just literally right underneath is your rotor housing, and that's pretty much it. Like, there's not all the other stuff that you see in piston engines, so quite really, really interesting wise. So as you can see down there, the air pump that's not even, or sorry, that's not the air pump, that's the air con compressor. That's not even, uh, doesn't even have anything in it. And this is for the, the speaker system. So this is already put in before, otherwise I do a video and all that. I mean, you can see it goes around, it goes inside, and then it just goes around the side of the car until it goes to the back. But one thing I do not like about having this huge speaker here, I'll show you guys. Look at that room, there's like nothing. I mean, I've got my coolant, which I need to actually mix. Um, these cars just take a little bit more maintenance than your normal cars. You gotta always make sure the oil stays good. It doesn't take your, you know, you wanna make sure. It actually recommends a lot different mixture ratios. Just a little toolkit here, my wiper fluid there. As you can see, here's the nice Alpine power and the spare. They don't have the bolts for those. But the spare still is good in our rear reservoir. But there's just not that much space, which is really why I like those bins right there. Because it does give you that kind of extra space. Now again, it is a stock exhaust, so it doesn't sound as good as it could, but... Here. Give it some revs. Could be better, it could be worse, but. This will become the drift car. So again, we'll go through videos on pretty much getting it ready and then track day stuff. Well, I'll definitely keep you guys updated on everything that's being done. I'll keep videos up so you guys can see the progress and really also to help any RX-7 owners that a lot of times when I look on YouTube, there's a lot of stuff that's just like, oh, my RX-7 is doing this, or it's doing this. So I want to try and help anyone out. You know, if if it helps them out, if they didn't know how to do it, and they watch it, and they learn, you know, that's really cool. But until next time, you guys.